Good evening, everybody. My name is Lynn Doherty, and I'm the leader of West Berkshire Council. Welcome to this Facebook Live session on our recovery and renewal process as we come out of COVID. I'm joined this evening by our Executive Director of Resource, Joseph Holmes, who I'll be handing over to in just a few moments. Before I um, continue, I'd just like to reflect that we are in a period of national mourning and I would pass our sincere condolences on to the Queen and the Royal Family on the loss of His Royal Highness Prince Philip. I also want to reflect on something else that I haven't had the opportunity to do since I last spoke to you. And that was the National Day of Reflection on the 23rd of March, whereby we marked one year since the first lockdown from COVID. I think many of us felt a huge amount of sadness that particular day as we looked back and remembered those who have been most impacted by COVID. Here in West Berkshire, we've lost 250 people to COVID. And I think everybody took a moment out of their day to sit and think about those and how that has impacted on others' lives. But we didn't just think backwards, we also thought about what is ahead of us. And there is lots of things that I feel very hopeful about as we move into the forthcoming year. This evening, we're actually not going to be focusing on our response to COVID. And that in itself feels quite promising to me as leader of West Berkshire Council. This evening, Joseph and I are here to talk to you about the recovery and renewal plans that West Berkshire Council has in the coming months. We actually have a few slides to share with you. Um, if I could just ask if we could share our screen, Joseph. Okay. Okay. And if you could just pop it into slide mode. Thank you, Joseph. Okay. So we have all, that's fine. Um, we've also been um, reflecting on the year that has just gone by in our response. And I want to just start with setting some of that context for you before I hand over to Joseph to actually talk to you about our plans for recovery and renewal. These slides before you are an indication of some of the massive amount of work that has gone on within West Berkshire Council and within our communities over the last year. And we've started to look through at what has been achieved. Going back to those early days when we first launched the Community Support Hub uh, with our partners Greenham Trust and West Berkshire Volunteer Bureau, you can see that the Community Support Hub has actually had over 4,500 calls to that hub. Uh, and I think that's an indication of some of the key elements of how we've responded, of how the communities have all come together so we we just wanted to we're, we're going to actually look at in the future how we share this more widely but we just thought there was a few key statistics here that would highlight some of the positive actions that have gone on over the last year how we've changed our ways of working and how everybody within West Berkshire has risen to the challenges that we've faced so these ones are very much I'm not going to read them out to you because I'm sure you can read them for yourselves but it starts that conversation about how we've changed the way that we work with our communities and these types of statistics are very much fed into our thoughts when we start to talk about our recovery plans if i could just move on to the next slide thanks joseph um, one of the things i think has probably been the most interesting um, for, for me particularly is the way that we've changed the way that we're communicating with our communities uh, this is actually my fifth facebook live session we did the first one back in may last year and you can see here from this slide that actually the level of communication coming out from west berkshire council has increased dramatically so there are some things that we don't want to lose as we move forward because that would be something that i think has been really valuable to ensure that our communities are kept updated um, we also want to share with you some of the thoughts that we have around some of the things that have gone on as our business as usual so despite the fact that we have been responding to COVID, we've been able to look at some of our key strategies and you'll see there mention of some of the work that we've done around the environment. Um, uh, you know, these are things that we know are still important to people. So there's going to be a lot more coming out with regards to this strategy, uh, but I'm going to hand over to Joseph to give you the details of that before once um, we've had Joseph's had the opportunity to speak, we will then throw it open to questions. 
And, and what I would say with regards to questions, as I have previously, we'll attempt to answer questions that we've had pre-submitted, and we'll also answer any questions that are put on live this evening. Uh, if we haven't got the answers, and I can't guarantee we'll have the answers for all of those questions, uh, we will certainly make sure that we come back to you. So I'll hand over to you for a moment, Joseph. Super, thank you very much, uh, Lynn. And I just wanted to highlight a few of the activities that we've already covered as part of our recovery strategy. So the, the original recovery strategy was approved by the executive back in July 2020. And there have been a variety of uh, items that we've undertaken as part of that. Here's just some of the highlights uh, in front of uh, you on the slides. So the first one is around mental health and the work we've been uh, doing with the Green and Common Trust around the Surviving to Thriving uh, projects, uh, which, which um, you know, is a really interesting uh, piece of work that, that we're looking forward to seeing the, the benefit of. Lynn mentioned some of the work around the economy and the support to uh, keep the high street uh, open and then to, to reopen more fully. Uh, you know, clearly this week uh, has, has been very uh, busy and we're going to uh, launch uh, a new scheme to help support the high street as well in the coming uh, weeks too. We've also, as part of the recovery, distributed a, a wide range of business grants and, and, and the two largest ones left now uh, are the restart grants and those started to be paid out earlier this week where there's up to £18,000 uh, per business and we've also got a range of additional restriction grants uh, for, a, for a variety of businesses, all the information is on our website but uh, we have funding through uh, to March 2022 uh, for additional uh, restriction grants to help support businesses uh, over the over the coming uh, months many of us you will have seen the lateral flow testing sites across the district and, and then the enhancement around mobile and and and, and community uh, use of uh, those and then also we've completed a lot of work around education helping to support schools uh, to fully open up as well as holiday activity uh, programs uh, taking place there's a range of other areas but those are those are some of the, the the highlights from the recovery strategy so far and some of the things we're reflecting on want to bring forward as part of a of a new recovery strategy and 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 considering everything that's happened in the in the last year since we launched uh, the original one uh, is around uh, closing the inequality gap and that, that inequality we've seen across a, a wide range of uh, areas. Um, some of this was highlighted in the previous slides from Lynn, but the promotion of active uh, life uh, lifestyles and, and active travel. And, and also uh, we've set aside money in the budget uh, for this year around reshaping our town centres, both uh, in Newbury and then looking at more widely across the master planning exercises across some of our other core town centres uh, in the district. Lynn picked up around how we've been community communicating and that that will be a really fundamental part of our uh, recovery strategy going forward is that is that relationship with our community um, uh, both our residents and our businesses and how we can build on that and uh, enhance that and I think importantly as well um, is picking up and is remembering those who, who who we've lost across the district and also who then continue to be impacted uh, by COVID uh, in the coming uh, weeks and months. I'll stop uh, sharing my screen as well Lynn. Okay, thank you, Joseph. Um, so as you can see, the, there's quite a few plans going on. Um, the actual recovery and renewal paper comes forward in um, June. We were actually looking at our council strategy refresh as the first paper that comes forward in May. And then there will be a more detailed paper coming through in June, which we'll look forward to sharing with you, as, as Joseph's just said. Um, so more than happy to take any questions on that. We have had a couple of um, pre-submitted questions that I, I would just cover off. We've had a, a question from Mike over in Hungerford about planting of trees and how um, West Berkshire Council could help with tree planting. Uh, and I think it's great that communities get involved in these projects. I've heard some really positive um, things coming back from community um, tree planting initiatives. Uh, in terms of our support, we're always happy to give guidance and support. I know there's often technical advice needed um, to check the suitability of locations and potential trees. So our countryside team is very happy to get involved in, in that respect. With regards to actual trees and actually part and parcel of what we're looking at for our recovery and renewal um, work is a blossom in um, a spring into blossom or blossom in, spring into blossom project where we're actually looking at um, bringing forward some some 
trees that blossom in the springtime as a way of marking and remembering all of those that have been lost to COVID. So you'll hear about more of that over the coming months. Um, so that was, I just wanted to respond to, I think it was Mike in Hungerford, a um, question around how we can support with trees, but very happy to look at all the initiatives that people have, ha have going on. And our countryside team will give guides advice where, where, they, where they can. The other pre-submitted question that I've had in was from um, Gail Bo Pollard, uh, who's been talking to us about the um, market square and the hospitality industries there and how um, we can make sure that that comes back to life. Her specific question to, to, to us was, where is the vision? Uh, for those of you that have been um, keeping abreast of some of the activities we've been doing over the recent months, is we have actually commissioned a um, newbie town centre master plan vision with Hemingway Designs and they've been out um, well they've started with a survey out to all residents to ask what residents felt and um, would like to know going forward about what that might look like we're really pleased with the response and um, I think we've had over 4,000 comments on the actual response as well as the survey results uh, there have been some key points that have started to come back in from that around how um, we should be responding as a town as a Newbury Town Centre, a lot being said about wanting more independent shops, cafes and restaurants, um, very much an, an increased focus on leisure and culture activities. And, uh, and also an interesting piece around making more use of the canal space and those green spaces, more provision for young people is coming out and looking at how we create a healthy sustainable town uh, for the future um, and encourage more events and encourage more people into town so we're actually going through all of the results of that consultation at the moment and then looking at what they are our consultants are suggesting as a um, vision for the future and that comes out I think it's May Joseph if I remember rightly we'll be coming back out to consultation to all residents asking them what the views of that vision is to make sure that we're on the right track because I'm always very conscious that everybody has a different um, view of what that should look like. So obviously we want to make sure we listen to as many people as possible and, and, and look at what the majority and those key things are coming back into us. As. So they were the two questions that I had in previously that I thought was just worthwhile covering off. Uh, there's, a, there's a question come in about what community engagement will look like in the future. Um, I think it's a good idea, but it's important to hear things you might not like to as well as things you do. And I entirely agree. For me, communication is more about engagement and listening. And actually, when I say that, it's understanding the needs of our different communities. So we have got a community engagement um, strategy that we've put in place and we are looking at how we can do that in a, a, in a deeper way. So you might have seen there was a press release today um, talking about this so we're picking up that we've got particular groups uh, within our communities that are less heard than others so we're looking at how we can reach some of those groups um, and some of our minority ethnic groups um, were, were one of the standout areas from our surveys our young people were another one and we're looking at how we address that so we really want to think about what is the best mechanism um, I say best mechanism I don't think it'll be one mechanism because some people like we are this evening are quite digitally intelligent and able to get online but not everybody is so there has to still be that opportunity of face-to-face -face communication and, and when I talk about listening it's not just listening it's understanding the need and then being able to respond to that need um, so yes it's something that we certainly we've got a whole strategy about on it I'd urge you to look at it we haven't we haven't nailed down every single thing in there. Um, and we haven't done that really for the reason that we, we want to hear back from people about how they find best, uh, what best, uh, the best methods for those in those different areas and communities that um, work best for them. I think, I think then if I, I just add, add to that as well, uh, um, at the local government association, so that's an organization that, that represents a variety of local authorities, they, they um, do a regular uh, polling of over a thousand uh, people uh, at random uh, from across the country. And, and, and one of the things that's really come out as part of the last year is that, that trust in your local council. So, so there's been a really uh, you know, quite a marked increase in that um, across the country. And I think as part of our communication engagement strategy, we really want to build on that and enhance that. And, and I think as Lynn said, move to that more involving and participatory uh, element as well as communication as well and, 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 and making sure that we're actually building on everything that we've learned over the last, over the last year. I think we also appreciate we will hear things that we don't always like um 
So, uh, and, and that's good. That's 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 good. I, I, there, there should always be, and there will always be um, different elements and different thoughts. I think what's important for us is to look at the the majority and the um, the balance across meeting everybody's needs and how we we keep that as a balanced response because we recognise that not everybody's needs are the same. So um, we 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 welcome that. Um, not you know we welcome that. There's a very specific question come up, um, which is about a particular pavement um at, at, at a particular location and i'm afraid i'm not familiar and i'm looking at joseph with that particular location so on that one around the um safety of a pavement i'm gonna have to ask if we can take that one away and come back this um to you so i don't know if you've left contact details um but i don't know the area well enough um, to be able to respond to that very specific question, but we are happy to take that away from this evening session uh, and provide a uh, look into it and provide a response for you. Joseph, is it worthwhile saying something about our six um, sort of priority areas, just running through those? Yeah, oh, so I can uh, I'm just uh, quickly uh, run through those. So um, the ones that the the, the, that, we're, that we're building on. So we had uh, six in the original strategy last year and, and we're, we're looking at whether or not we expand those out. But um, those six are the, the first ones around uh, recovering our health and social uh, well-being. Uh, we're then also looking at ensuring our economic recovery uh, and renewal and uh, having a look on uh, how different areas of the economy and different individuals uh, and sectors may well have been impacted uh, by COVID. Uh, and then also looking at how we support our children and young people uh, and our schools uh, and, 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 and focus on those who are the most uh, vulnerable. Um, we want to work with our local communities uh, and you picked this up earlier, Lynn, around how we accelerate the delivery of our uh, environmental objectives. Um, and again, picking up uh, as well, enhancing our um, communication and community engagement. Um, I think also it, it, it actually picks up a little bit of the question that we just had in, but it's around uh, our sort of sixth one is around improving our customers' experience uh, and and also our sort of efficiency and openness and and how we work with uh, with our community and how we share information. Uh, and then I think lastly we're 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 looking at an additional theme around how we seize. Uh, the positives from the pandemic, but also that we don't forget those who who we've lost or who, who's, whose lives uh, have changed uh, significantly as, as a result of the pandemic. So, so those are the main areas, Lynn, that I think we're, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of be coming out on um, with, with, with a range of actions and trying to try and ensure there's consistency across some other strategies that we've uh, released uh, recently uh, around those. Okay, thanks, Joseph. Um... I suppose one of the questions that might be on people's minds is, um, do we have the funding available to support this recovery journey? Yeah, and I, I, it's, it's a, a good question. I think there's there's a there's a couple of streams uh, to that. So so one in our capital strategy that um, was approved last uh, month um, uh, by the council that did have a, a number of recovery elements already in there, especially around the open uh, spaces and, and park side of things. So uh, the council did, has set aside more funding there to try and uh, enhance uh, some of our some of the offering that we have, and also recognising that a lot more people now are getting out into our into our uh, sort of countryside and open spaces, which is great. Um, so we're really keen to build on that uh, and ensure that, that that those capital funds are there. Um, and then also uh, as part of the government funding that we've uh, received, we're looking at what, what funding we can we can set aside to support the uh, recovery uh, agenda. But but we are really keen to to ensure that there is there is some funding to uh, go with the ambitions um, because you know this this as we, we should have said at the start you know, that this recovery period is it, we don't, we're not we're not talking sort of weeks and a few months is it, it, it is going to be over a longer period. Uh, so we need to make sure that that that, that we have set set that aside uh, uh, that will come in with the recovery strategy in the next uh, few months. Okay, thanks, Joseph. Um, there's a question coming here about the um, opening up of the market square to pedestrianisation as the town council has proposed, thanks to enable a cafe culture and support our hospitalities. Um, uh, yes, we've been looking at very much working very closely with the, the, the bid and town centre stakeholders over the recent months, and we've done an, a, an array of different measures um, to support the reopening of our town centre. So we actually um, have looked at what the opportunities are going forward, and it's one of the things we've 
you ask her in that vision work to look at what that means to newbie, taking into account the fact that we have to be able to maintain emergency vehicle access to our town centres. Uh, we also have people that um, live in our town centres that need to be able to get to their, their homes. And we also have the situation whereby we have um, deliveries and they don't, uh, the, the, businesses along Northport Street um, do not have uh, backdoor deliveries, but they have to be delivered through the front. So we have to look at a number of different key elements to how we do that. So the, the town centre is pedestrianised for the key shopping times. Uh, we have had requests in to look at to see whether we were able to do it for longer. Uh, I think particularly the requests that we had was for a five week period um, from obviously on the 12th of um, April, only on Monday, we saw the reopening of our hospitality businesses and our non-essential retail. So that was a very positive step. And I saw lots of um, people pleased to be back out. Uh, there was some very good pictures I saw of people sat at the front of the um, Corn Exchange. And I know people throughout the um, West Berkshire have been really happy to be able to get back and support their local businesses. And we're certainly trying to encourage them to do that. Uh, we're encouraging them to do it through um, making sure that we're advertising and promoting our our local businesses and, and actually running a shop local campaign and enabling um, those residents to understand what is open, what isn't open. I think there's an ongoing challenge for our hospitality businesses. I think I was reading two thirds of hospitality businesses don't in the UK don't actually have um, outdoor space and therefore for this period of time they're taking some are taking the decision whether or not they can or cannot open um, so obviously it makes a huge difference if they've got that outdoor space or not to assist with our um, own hospitality businesses we've looked at um, licensing um, with regards to pavement licensing and we've actually I think um, we've waived that fee um, for for the year to enable those that can and have can do safely to open up um, we we're also looking at um, what other measures we can put in place to help and encourage um, people back into high streets and one of the key pieces of work is some of the information and guidance that we're able to give to those particular industries through our public protection teams um, to help them get to that point I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add to that Joseph I don't I don't think so Lynn that was very 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 uh, comprehensive I'm trying to think of, I've, I've got captured everything, but we are in um, regular conversations with um, people, stakeholders within all of our town centres, not just Newbury. Uh, obviously we've got town centres across the district. Uh, and I know that we're looking at um, another, we've got, a, we've got a grant from central government that is around some of the, how we make our town and is more attractive um, on what we can do but we're also match funding that grant with our own money to enable independent businesses to bid for that money to look at what initiatives they can do to encourage greater footfall and, and, and work collaboratively with those to make sure that we're supporting them. Okay. Um, we've got another question Lynn so um, there's a sort of question around as inflation ticks up uh, do you see this impacting interest rates and the, and the cost of I'll let you <coughs> have that one Joseph. Yeah, yeah thanks thanks Lynn. Um, yeah so so it, it, the, the question is around you know are interest rates uh, going to go up and, and and will that have a have an impact on the cost of council borrowing um, I'm, I'm not an economist so I'm, 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 I'm not sure when if and how much interest rates will go up but um, Actually, the the rate that the council can borrow at um, has has gone up slightly. Actually, in the last uh, couple of months, government government guilt rates uh, have have gone up a little bit, but they are still at historically uh, uh, very very low levels for for the amount that we can borrow at, which is which is very positive for us. It enable it means that the cost of borrowing for us um, is 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 lower than it than it has been for a number of years, um, which does mean that the that when we're borrowing certainly over the long term, um, you know, some 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 of that repayment is is at a lower level, and certainly a, 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 there's a less of an impact on the medium term financial strategy. Um, but also, we're exploring other opportunities rather than just borrowing purely via the government. So we we were the uh, uh, the UK's first. Uh, council to launch a municipal bond uh, last year um, and we launched that at a rate that was uh, substantially lower than the amount that we could borrow from central government so we're exploring what other opportunities are there uh, to uh, borrow at, 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 a, at a lower rate uh, than we can get through uh, central government which means that, that we're saving the, the wider taxpayer some money and it still means also that we can fund all those aspirations that we've that, that, that we have in the uh, capital strategy. Okay, um, there's a there's a question about the east, um, and they don't really have a town. A town. We're in the shadows of Reading. Um, 
it sometimes feels like Newbury is a different world. Transport being really difficult from east to west is so difficult and slow, but are there plans to increase the bus service? It's quite an interesting one because I love Pangbourne Town Centre and I always think of that as a, as a town centre. And I, you know, I appreciate the size and scale of Pangbourne and Thiel, uh, a far smaller than Newbury, which is the main urban conurbation in the West Berkshire district, but we still want to support those high streets. And actually part and parcel of that high street funding that I was just talking to you about is very much um, for them as well. So I know last time around, we were able to do signs, leaflets, literature, guidance, and we're more than happy to, we've been actively, our economic development um, been actively promoting um, businesses across the district to really try to support not just Newbury, but recognizing that we have villages and town centres in the east and the west. Um, so we really want to make sure we do support them. With regards to the transport, I know we've done an awful lot of, um, I've seen just only this week, I think, the enhancements at Thiel, uh, and I know that um, Thiel Rail Station, so I know that the linkage on the railways from the east to the west is good, and I know that I've got colleagues over in um, Talhurst that use the, um, the, is it the Black Bus, um, at the A, A1 black bus is it that, that come, comes across? I might have that wrong. Apologies if I do. Um, to come across and, and have a day out in Newbury. Um, we haven't got any increased bus services at this current time. And what we're looking at doing is obviously supporting our, some of our bus services because they've been impacted by the impacts of COVID. Um, it's a difficult time for them, but we haven't got any plans to increase at the moment. But what part and parcel of the recovery piece does include looking at the travel um, plans across the district and how that will work towards, uh, I think it's in July 22, a complete travel um, plan for the district to make sure that we look at all, um, all requirements for travel. And I, I think the other thing as well, Lynn, is, is, is the money that's been set aside for um, further master planning outside of Newbury as well. So, so trying to capture some of our, our other, our other towns across the uh, across the district so it's not it's not just Newbury uh, as part no. of that as well yeah no, and we're, we're keen to do that uh, I've just got a question uh, here Lynn for you which is around yeah you know, we, we do have a range of priorities there um in the recovery strategy is there is there one that that, that you wanted to highlight as being most sort of critical in the in the short term in the short term uh, it's a really good question Joseph um the top three priorities for me have always been around the, the health of our residents, um, the education of our res residents and the, um, the economic, um, the local economy for our residents, because obviously that's jobs and livelihoods as well. In the short term, I think probably one of the priorities will be around the health um, uh, health recovery plans because I think what we are finding and seeing and hearing is around the impact of lockdown on our residents the impact on particularly mental health uh, and it's an area that we've already recognized within our recovery plan so Joseph mentioned to you the surviving to thriving fund and that's a joint initiative with Greenham Trust uh, whereby we're supporting um, local voluntary organizations and community groups that can offer assistance and support to people that are suffering from mental health and I think that's a real concern across the age groups from our from our young people um, who have been isolated from their school friends uh, across to our elderly people who have been isolated from their their families um, so mental health and we're um would probably be one of the key things that I'm most concerned about at this point. We've actually had such demand for that fund that we've increased funding. Um, we agreed this week to increase the funding for that particular fund. And there is actually a um, mental health forum on the 30th of April um, hosted by Greenham Trust. And I believe Laura Farris, our MP, uh, is, is chairing, um, hosting that along with Chris Bolton um, from Greenham Trust. And I'm actually going to join it because I think it's, it's a really interesting thing because there are so many different elements to this that we need to make sure we, we're, we're covering an almost cradle to grave solution for mental health. So we do an awful lot of work with our schools. Uh, we already have that. And I think one of the slides we put up at the start saw that our Emotional Health Academy, which you know we, we have here in West Berkshire, and we're very fortunate to have here in West Berkshire, has been able to triage, look at a number of young people and be able to support them. Um, there's ongoing conversations, obviously, with um, our NHS colleagues uh, and our clinical commission groups about what that looks like at the more acute end. So I think probably at this point, short term, I would say it's people's 
health because I think there's a concern around mental health but there's also then the concern around the impact of COVID and the physical health of people so we're, we're seeing more come out about long COVID and what support's available for those that are suffering from long COVID. I saw some interesting stats the other day on this and I think it was about 14% um, of people that have had COVID report symptoms um, for some time afterwards so I think that's going to be something that we're going to have to look at Joseph. Um, so I'd probably say at this point the health piece is going to be a priority and I say that because the two other elements education we're still looking at so teachers are still in that process of assessing young people and what they have and haven't been able to obtain over the last few months so I don't think we've got a complete picture there and with regards to the sort of local economy certainly the feedback that I'm seeing um, and I'm a member of the local enterprise partnerships Thames Valley is that the Thames Valley and particularly areas like West Berkshire have not suffered as badly as some other areas and that's really around the mix of businesses that we have and the employment opportunities that we have related to those businesses so I, I would probably go on the health piece short term Joseph. Okay, we've uh, we've had another question in uh, Lynn, so I'll read out. So we've uh, it just says, please keep car access to and through uh, the town centre. Car drivers would suffer as Newbury has precious few link roads. Northbrook Street has pedestrians been uh, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Cyclists are more of a hazard. Uh, there's not a cafe culture here. It's West Berkshire, not Barcelona. It's, do you know what? There is no simple solution to this. Um, I've watched many polls over the year. I've been a resident of, of this area for more years than I care to remember and had this question uh, raised time and time again. And I think 50% of people would like to see pedestrianisation and 50% wouldn't. Um, I know in some areas it works, but some areas um, ring roads around their town centres. They don't just have the A339. There needs to be proper traffic assessment flows going on because we know how congested the 339 can get. And we've done a lot of work on that recently around the Bear Road um, junction improvements to keep traffic flowing. Um, and it's difficult during COVID because we haven't seen the number of car journeys that you would normally expect to see so we have to balance all of this we have to balance everybody's needs and interesting one of the things that was coming back from the master planning was that Newbury is still very car dependent because we are in a rural location and because just just as the person that's put that question in we have many rural villages that come in and use Newbury as their main town centre and they are dependent on cars to come into the town centre so it's a really difficult one it splits opinion every time and what we're trying to do is actually do a a, a proper piece of work that looks at how feasible this would or wouldn't be and then consult and when I talk about consulting people I consult everybody in the area because it isn't just people directly living in the high street um, or in the immediate vicinity of the high street that this will impact um, so I haven't got the answer to that and interestingly the whole thing about weather does come up because I know when we first put um I can remember when we used to park in a marketplace and I can remember when we first looked at taking parking out of the marketplace. I wasn't part of the council then, but there was an uproar. There was a huge uproar. But people said, no, we want to have the cafe culture. We want to do that. Unfortunately, our weather does not always enable that. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It would be ideal. And it's great to see people sitting out. And I think probably culture wise, whether our weather is less of a determinant for that going forward because of covid because more people are thinking actually outdoors is healthier and but we don't know at this point and we don't know how behaviors will have changed over the last year so we're not going to rush into a decision that isn't a decision that everybody can buy into and support uh, you know we're going to work with our communities we're going to listen to our communities and that's all of our communities to try to come up with a solution based on those key elements Okay, I don't see any further questions, Lynn. Okay. Well, Joseph and I don't need to stay and take up any more of your time if you have no more questions. Um, we are doing these on a regular basis. So, you know, we, we I think um, my colleague Steve Arderwater did one 
working on the environment recently. I know um, I know yourself and um, Ross did one uh, recently as well, Joseph, on our budget. Yep. So we're trying to do more of these. Um, but feel free to email in any questions that you have prior to these, and we will keep posting them. We hope we that you find them useful. We're, we're really open to continuing with the Facebook Live sessions. Um, hopefully in time as well, we'll actually get to be able to come out physically and get around to the different communities and see people in person, because you can't take that aspect away either. But I'm certainly feeling far more positive um, as we go into step two and start to see them looking. I looked at our um, COVID rates today and um, we're down at under 20 and I can't actually remember 20 per 100,000. Sorry, I should clarify that. Um, I can't remember the last time we were that. That's lower than we were last summer. Um, so I think this certainly feels a, a positive time, a time when I do wish all of our businesses the very best uh, with reopening, because I know how difficult financially this last year will have been to them all. And I hope that the work that we've done as a council to really make sure that we prioritise getting any grants out to you and keeping that line of communication has helped uh, because we really do want to support you. Um, but I do feel more optimistic at this time, probably than I felt for the last um, two or three sessions that I've sat down with you all. So um, thank you all for joining us this evening and we look forward to seeing you in another few um, weeks time.